show. When I got my first talk show, I gave my mentor, Red Fox, his first appearances on live entertainment television. Here he is talking about his 18-year relationship with his friend, Malcolm X, and ad-libbing one of the funniest lines in the history of live television about money. Oh, uh, one of my very favorite people. He's opening. <laughs> short- my guide. <laughs> yeah, your guide. He's opening shortly at the International Hotel with Perry Como. Ladies and gentlemen, Red Fox. Red. <laughs> What, what, what are those you have on, Red? I think uh, I was down south. I got these down south. I was in Mississippi for two days. And everybody kept saying knickers. Knickers, so I bought me a pair. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. I had a bad straight man. Does that mean I get to work the club for a minute? Yes, you can have it. Uh, no, yeah, you don't. You aren't one much for uh, uh, black power or anything like that, are green you? Green power, baby. Huh? Green power. <laughs> yeah, I can get me some green power, and I can buy the buildings where black power and white power is holding their meetings. <laughs> and I can tear them down and open up two seventy-six service stations under a fictitious name. <laughs> hey, Red, have you ever thought, this is stupid. Red Monahan. <laughs> this kind of silly question, you've ever wondered why money was green? Why is money green? Because, I guess, it's because Jews pick it before it gets right. <laughs> You got equal time. Why is my face black? <laughs> my red. Before I get right. Oh, Chop me up a salad. <laughs> no, no, no. No. <laughs> I'm not gonna mess with you. This is your room. Oh, it's a caucus. That's done. Oh gosh, is that funny, oh, Red? That's yeah. really yeah. funny. No, I'm part Jewish. Fox. You- <laughs> that couldn't be all black. <laughs> Although we have black foxes. <laughs> when when you were when you were a youngster, Red. I never was. When I was born, I was forty-one. <laughs> <laughs> no, in, in 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 your in your younger days, you knew Malcolm, didn't you? Oh yeah, I knew him quite well. I think I knew him better than anyone, you know. In his young days. How, how, how long did you know him? 18 years. We were friends and partners and whatever. What kind, what kind, of, what kind of business were you in? Were we in business? Uh, trying to escape. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, this when, one thing. When, you were, when, you were, when you were a young man with, uh, with Malcolm, did you ever see in him the qualities that would lead to his being idolized not only by his people but to a lot of people around the world well he had leadership qualities all the time and he had a big heart he was all man and he was honest you know and i think until he took that whipping you know took quite a few whippings i mean terrible whippings i don't think he would have been the man he was until you know when you're in the ghetto and you have nothing else to do but try to succeed you might do anything Mm -hmm. and which we tried some of all of it I'll, i'll tell it because it's past statute of limitation (laughs) <laughs> but we had to do some things just to survive, just to eat, you know. And you're sleeping on the roof, that's pretty rough in New York, you know. And you get up there and there's another guy sleeping on the roof in your spot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a true fact. I, I took my wife to New York last year and I drove by the building where Malcolm and I used to sleep on the roof, 707 St. Nicholas. But it's an elevated building, you know. We wouldn't sleep in a place where we had to walk up. You get an elevator and ride to the top floor and then walk up another flight, you know. Mm-hmm. Phew, nice warm chimney. Did, did you know him, uh, if, uh, during that 18 years that you knew him, did you see the, the gradual transition in his character and well, his I saw thought? the whole thing change. I saw everything change. I mean, it just was unbelievable how a man could just go from being level like this and then, whew, because he found something, like I found something. I don't march or things like that, but during my performances, I say, 
quite a few things that I think are contributions, both black and white, because mm -hmm. I don't uh, know any prejudices. I was never taught that. I don't care what color you are. If you don't touch me personally, we all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, why wouldn't you march? Me? Yeah. I wouldn't march from here to some money. <laughs> I'll catch a cab and meet them. <laughs> I just, I just never was involved. See, I'm in show business now. We got somebody out there somewhere that can lead the march. You know, like a general. Let's get two colonels and let them lead it. But I just can't, uh, that's not my bag. I'm a comic, and I love it. 31 years I've been doing this. And I, I, like I said, I'm making my contribution. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were to march, though, and if uh, you got involved, I mean, let's just say you went out and somebody struck you, what would happen? Struck me? Yeah. You <laughs> mean... <laughs> Physically struck Zorro. <laughs> I, I think I'd go crazy. <laughs> because I can't stand it. If somebody just draw back at me, my knife open up by itself. God, aren't we having a big time? <laughs> Uh, great show because right now we hit on a level of truth that couldn't have occurred unless there was a catalyst that sought out the truth. There was a guy who always used to dig named Jack Parr, and he had that, 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 that thing. He was willing to go in, into it. You seem to have the same thing, if you don't mind being compared to him. <laughs> Sunny, one so true. I love.